he returned the winner, just an average fifth round pick in my opinion. I mean, here's a guy that criticizes everybody, whoever they take. He's never been a coach, he's never been an administrator. And I got a question for the both of you. And so for Mel, I just want to ask, how am I not the number one safety in this year's draft based solely off of film, nothing else, just film? It's a great, great question. question. Mel was never shy in his opinion. So, you know, now everybody, oh, you know, Derrick Henry's great, but Derrick Henry didn't even go in the first round. Derrick Henry went in the second round. And you got my too, point, Kuiper. You're always splitting hairs, man. No, I'm not, I'm not splitting. I'm giving you facts. Because of the philosophy teams have taken from me, Todd, uh, and have, have kind of used that. I can't. I, honestly, I, I, it's Monday after the Super Bowl. I'm trying to enjoy just kind of, you know, rehashing the whole season. I'm trying to have a nice Monday here. I'm always interested to read his book. As long as he sends it free. <laughs> as the 2022 NFL Draft draws near, a familiar voice takes over the analysis and guessing game. After the Super Bowl wraps up and all eyes are on college prospects that will soon fill the rosters of NFL teams, Mel Kuyper Jr. becomes a regular on ESPN. Kuyper, with the same awesome helmet hair that he's had for over 40 years, shares his opinion, sitting behind the camera the same way he has done for over 39 years. He is a draft expert, a regular on ESPN who gives his seasoned advice and bold predictions on which college standout belongs to each team, which players will be busts and who will be stars, information that many either take or choose to ignore. And although Mel Kuyper Jr. might be a draft genius, there are a lot of misses that are swept under the rug. And because you all liked our first video on him so much, we return for Mel Kuyper Jr.'s Worst Draft Takes Part 2. Now Break! Mel Kuyper Jr. is the definition of a successful entrepreneur. In 1981, with only an Essex Community College degree, he started a NFL talent evaluation business out of his own home named Kuyper Enterprises. By 1984, he had joined the ESPN draft coverage and was named an analyst. Unlike the many names and faces that have appeared and then have departed from the Bristol, Connecticut Sports Network, Kuyper has remained and thrived. The first great armchair GM. He has published his own draft guide every spring since 1981, complete with write ups on each pro prospect. I'm always interested to read his book, as long as he sends it free. <laughs> In our last video, we featured many times that Mel Kuyper Jr. was wrong in the quarterback department. But this time, let's look at some of the other positions that he has missed out on throughout the years. In 1998, Mel Kuyper Jr. predicted that Ohio State linebacker Chris Spielman would be a fourth or fifth round pick. He went 29th overall to the Detroit Lions, was a first team All Pro by 1991, and became a four time Pro Bowler and is a member of the Detroit Lions all time team. Then in 1994, Mel Kuyper had this to say about one of the greatest running backs of our generation right before he got drafted. With the um Second pick in the first round, the Indianapolis Colts select Marshall Falk, running back, San Diego State. He's a great back, but I strongly disagree with this pick, and it's not any criticism at all of Marshall Falk. The Colts have to come out of this draft with a quarterback, and if they don't, they're right for some criticism. And in that 1994 draft, we also got the famous moment where Mel Kuyper Jr.'s opinion was finally called out by a NFL GM, when Kuyper blasted Indianapolis for moving up and taking a linebacker, Trev Alberts, and not a quarterback such as Trent Dilfer. I think it's a typical Colt move. I mean, here's a team that needed a franchise quarterback to pass up a Trent Dilfer when all you have is Jim Harbaugh. Give me a break. That's why the Colts are picking second every year in the draft, not battling for the Super Bowl like other clubs in the National Football League. Then came a quote that would be replayed from every draft day from 1994 to present. Who in the hell is Mel Kuyper, in a way? 
I mean, here's a guy that criticizes everybody, whoever they take. He's never been a coach. He's never been a scout. He's never been an administrator. Mel Kuyper has no more credentials than my neighbor, and my neighbor's a postman, and he doesn't even have season tickets to the NFL. In 1995, Mel Kuyper would say that Kajana Carter could be the next Bo Jackson. The running back did have a three-touchdown MVP performance in Penn State's 38-20 Rose Bowl victory in a 1994 season, where he rushed for 198 times for 1,539 yards, which was good for 7.8 yards per carry. Thus, the Cincinnati Bengals drafted Carter number one overall in 1995, but unfortunately he would tear his ACL before his pro debut, missing his entire rookie season. Then in 1997, he tore his rotator cuff and then broke his waist in 1998. Needless to say, he did not become the super athlete that the 1985 first overall pick Bo Jackson was and ended up only starting 14 games in his 59 appearances. But at the same time, I'll have to give it to him. It's really difficult to project that a player is going to be injury prone throughout the entirety of his career. In 1998, Mel's big board had a curious name at the top, Andre Wadsworth, an all-American defensive end out of Florida State. He was ranked as the number one overall prospect. That draft class, by the way, was not weak by any means. Wadsworth was ranked ahead of Heisman Trophy winner Charles Woodson and Hall of Famer Peyton Manning. Mel Kuyper Jr. compared Wadsworth to Hall of Famer Bruce Smith, 275 pounds a la Bruce Smith. And even though he was selected number three overall by the Arizona Cardinals, as Peyton Manning went number one and Ryan Leaf went number two, Wadsworth started only 30 games with 96 tackles and eight sacks during a brief NFL career that was hampered by knee injuries. Thankfully, teams know to be wary of Mel Kuyper Jr.'s old school opinion. One of Mel Kuyper's famous pieces of advice that has practically become football gospel is to never take a running back in the first round of the NFL draft. But in 2001, he did adjust that take a little bit when he declared LaDainian Tomlinson as the 25th best available player in the draft, which is still a low slot for what ended up being such a dynamic player. Although his college days were spent at T CU, a team that was then competing in the West Athletic Conference, he still shouldn't have been considered to be the third best running back in the draft class slotted behind Deuce McAllister and Michael Bennett. And at the same time, San Diego agreed. Tomlinson would get drafted by the San Diego Chargers and become one of the greatest players in that franchise's history. Tomlinson would rush for 1,974 yards and 20 touchdowns in his junior season and 2,158 yards and 22 touchdowns in 2000. San Diego had their own experts calling on Tomlinson as the fifth overall pick in that draft. Oh, I'll tell you, Chris, he carried the ball 49 times in one game last year, 36 times in one game as a junior. Certainly the productivity is there. Now, he did it against some bad defenses. There's no question about that. You also rightly saw the option in incorporating that offense. Remember Rashawn Slop, option back? He struggled, guys, and I think what really did it for Tomlinson was the fact that he went to the senior ball, and on that Tuesday practice in Mobile, Mort, he put on a show. I think he did everything right since the end of the season to become the fifth pick overall. Tomlinson did earn his high draft status, becoming the fifth leading rusher in NFL history with 13,684 yards. Tomlinson also had more touchdowns and yards on the ground than both McAllister and Bennett combined. For San Diego, he put in nine productive years and then had two more with the Jets before he retired and earned his bust in Canton. When Texas wide receiver Wes Welker went undrafted in 2004 and then bounced around the league a bit before New England decided to trade for Wes Welker, Kuyper interjected with his thought on the Patriots trade with a quote saying, I don't care how much you like his work ethic. He has done nothing to show a value that high, which was questioning the New England Patriots trade package for Wes Welker. Now, Welker, like many others, was able to prove Kuyper wrong, making five Pro Bowls and was a first or second team All-Pro in four of his seasons with New England. More importantly, he was a key factor in the New England Patriots' dominance towards the late 2000s and early 2010s. In 2004, Mel Kuyper boldly projected a wide receiver out of USC, Mike Williams, to be a future Pro Football Hall of Famer. Williams had 30 touchdowns in college and had solid numbers at the Combine. Williams ended up 
up being selected 10th overall by the Detroit Lions. On draft day, Kuiper said of Williams that I'll see you at his Hall of Fame induction in Canton. And in 2008, Mel Kuiper admitted that he was wrong, saying that Williams might have been one of his worst evaluations, as Williams would only spend two seasons in Detroit and finish his NFL career with barely 1,500 yards and only five touchdowns. Now, a player that Kuiper didn't even have on his big board in 2004 was Jared Allen, a defensive end at Idaho State University, who became a three-time All-Big Sky Conference selection with 250 tackles, 38 and a half sacks, seven fumble recoveries, 12 forced fumbles, three interceptions, three touchdowns, and 26 pass deflections in college alone. Kuiper's biggest criticism of Allen was that he needed a lot of work in the weight room. And Kansas City easily got a great deal drafting him in the fourth round as he went on to lead the NFL in sacks in 2007 and 2011. He then went on to the Minnesota Vikings and succeeded there as well, being named a first-team All-Pro four times, making five Pro Bowls and tying the NFL record with four safeties forced. Aaron Curry, a linebacker from Wake Forest, made 331 tackles and six interceptions during his four years in black and gold. Thus, Mel Kuyper said he was one of the safest picks in the 2009 NFL Draft, even implying that he was flawless. The Seahawks selected Curry fourth overall in that draft, and in his two seasons, he made 110 tackles and five and a half sacks and was traded during the 2011 season to Oakland, but he didn't improve. After five seasons in the NFL and under two 200 total tackles and no interceptions, his time in a pro uniform was over. On draft day 2010, after the New England Patriots selected him in the second round, Kuiper called the tight end out of the University of Arizona, named Rob Gronkowski, stiff, adding that he doesn't adjust to the ball well. Kuiper mentioned that the Patriots should have selected Ed Dixon or Sergio Kindle ahead of Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski, of course, is a four-time Super Bowl champion, four-time first-team All-Pro, five-time time pro bowler and led the NFL with receiving touchdowns in 2011. Not bad for a stiff. In 2011, Mel Kuyper also famously ranked the Seahawks 2011 draft a D minus. Now, this was a draft class that had key components that literally carried the Seahawks to a Super Bowl, featuring the likes of Richard Sherman, which Kuyper had this to say about. Sherman, the former wide receiver turned corner, just an average fifth round pick in my opinion. Some of those guys never forgot what was said about him. All pro player Sherman called out the draft and the draft guru Kuyper in 2013 via Dan Hansis of NFL.com, with Sherman saying that's all it is. It's a sham. The players that are going to be hype are going to be hyped. And that's why you have half of the first round as busts every year. You can go from now until the end of time. Guys have somehow maneuvered their way into the first round and maneuvered their way into the spotlight. The Seahawks went on to back-to-back -back Super Bowl appearances after the 2011 draft class got going, once again proving Kuiper wrong. Now, what's even more interesting is the very next year, Mel Kuyper would once again give the Seattle Seahawks a poor grade in a draft class that featured Bruce Irvin, Bobby Wagner, and Russell Wilson. Now, I will go out on a limb and stick up for Mel Kuyper because Bruce Irvin was perceived as a bit of a reach at that pick and did turn out to have a solid career, although it wasn't even close to the likes of Bobby Wagner and Russell Wilson. But Kuyper gave this organization back to back bad grades, this time giving them a C- on their 2012 picks. Now, the Seahawks won the Super Bowl for the 2013 season. Bobby Wagner and Russell Wilson went on to play for the Seattle Seahawks for almost a decade. Wagner is a six-time first-team All-Pro and an eight-time Pro Bowler and part of the NFL All-Decade team. The linebacker also led the NFL in tackles in 2016 and 2019. Russell Wilson is a nine-time Pro Bowler, Bart Starr Award winner, and is mentioned in rap songs. He is without a doubt one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in NFL history and truly a remarkable ambassador for the game of football. If anything, the Seahawks 2012 NFL Draft should have at least made the honor roll. Now, leading up to the 2013 draft, Le'Veon Bell wasn't given top prospect status, especially by Mel Kuyper. The Michigan State running back rushed for 3,346 yards in college, but Kuyper said that Bell would not translate well to the NFL level. 
Bell was drafted in the second round by the Steelers and had a great season becoming the first Steeler rookie to lead the team in rushing since Tim Worley did it in 1989. On 44 carries, he rushed for 860 yards, with 8 rushing touchdowns and had 45 receptions for 399 yards. He became a first team All-Pro in 2014 and 2016 and a three-time Pro Bowler. Bell went on a Twitter rampage blasting Kuiper, writing, I think it's so funny how Mel Kuyper is just qualified to talk about the draft. Dude be wrong with just about everything though. Of course, anybody can say anything about a can't miss prospect like Clowney or Peyton Manning or something like that, but he was wrong about Ray Lewis. He definitely was wrong about me and he has his favorites. And it's just crazy that people listen to him and his buddy Todd McShay. No way they watch legitimate film on all the prospects and can understand the way they compare and contrast because they both just have their favorites and roll with their favorites all year, straight up. When TJ Watt was a member of the 2017 NFL draft class, he was considered as undersized and living under his big brother JJ Watt's superstar status. Kuiper was one of the many who agreed that TJ didn't have the ability to match up against NFL offensive linemen and didn't see him as an effective pass rusher. The so-called draft guru had the younger Watt as a second round pick on his big board. However, the Steelers saw what Kuiper didn't and selected TJ with a 30th overall pick. I think he's a second round pick uh, with his pass rush ability and obviously the Watt name is going to help him. Just plays hard all the time and he will work as hard as anybody as well. So I think Watt's a second rounder. Alas, Kuiper admitted that he was wrong by September of TJ's rookie season by writing an article that had him listed as the second best rookie in the NFL. Kuiper wrote about TJ that he was incredibly disruptive and that Watt has done more than impress fans and coaches since he had walked into the team's practice facility. And considering that I had my doubts about the pick on draft night, he has silenced those doubts faster than anyone could imagine. This past season, TJ Watt earned the coveted NFL's Defensive Player of the Year honor, a big win over doubters and finally matching his big brother. Watt even proved that even at his size, he can be a versatile player that is able to make plays all over the field. Also in 2017, Mel Kuyper had University of Tennessee running back Alvin Kamara as more of a quote-unquote situational player and return man. With a 4.56 in the 40-yard dash, it was discovered that once he was inserted into real game situations, he thrived. Now, there were many running backs selected before Kamara, like Leonard Fournette, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, and Christian McCaffrey, who Mel Kuyper called a slot wide receiver. McCaffrey, first of all, is not a running back. He's a slot receiver. He's a wide receiver, punt returner, kick returner. This is before the Saints selected Kamara in the third round. Now, Alvin Kamara ended up being the co-offensive rookie of the year, leading all rookies with 14 touchdowns in 2017, and thus far has been named to the Pro Bowl five times. Kuyper addressed Kamara on the Dan Patrick Show. I'll go back to Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara didn't have a great 40 time, but he had an incredible broad jump and an incredible vertical jump. So when you look at the numbers, if the numbers are bad across the board, you say, wow, okay, I got to go back and really think about it. Is this kid just a great college player or a good college player with limited pro potential? But if you get a kid who runs a, a less than stellar 40, but he has the super numbers in other explosive, as you said, athletically explosive areas, then you're fine. So I think that is a very, a very good way to look at this thing. It's hard to predict whether a player will be a bust or star, but what Mel Kuyper Jr. prides himself on is his big board, where he predicts which NFL team will select a specific player. For the last few years, his inside knowledge has been considered a sham as the younger generation of GMs and front office personnel are keeping pre-draft day information tightly sealed. In 2017, he only mocked two picks correctly, Leonard Fournette to Jacksonville and Christian McCaffrey to Carolina. Then in 2018, he only had four slots correct in his mock draft, and then in 2019 had seven picks correct in his mock draft, putting him in 10th place of ESPN media members who have unveiled their own mock draft. It was in 2020 when Mel Kuyper really went on a losing streak with 21 consecutive picks in the wrong spot. Several players from his final big board in 2020, including Alabama safety 
Xavier McKinney would remain available going into the draft second night. When McKinney asked Kuiper about why he wasn't his number one safety on his list, Kuiper responded, It's a great, it's a great question, question, Xavier. He's the best pure safety. Antoine Winfield is a slot corner slash safety with more versatility. Ran 4-4-5, four, four, Xavier ran 4-6-3. As a pure safety, Xavier McKinney is number one on my board. That's a versatile guy who can do a lot of things and wear a lot of hats. It would be Antoine Winfield Jr. Both are going to go in that 20 to 25, 20 to 28 range. In 2021, Kuiper's 37th year in covering the draft, he was correct in only six total picks. And he started off strong because with all due respect, it wasn't the most difficult draft to mock. Going four of his top five, missing Trey Lance, but correctly picked Elijah Vera Tucker going to the New York Jets, but he had them at the 16th overall pick instead of the 14th overall pick after the New York Jets traded up from the number 23 selection. Now, this isn't something I'm necessarily going to hold against Mel Kuyper because the unpredictability of the NFL draft is a huge reason why we watch it and we just don't go based off of mock drafts. Usually my mock draft picks are incorrect as well. And if you want, you could take a look at my latest mock draft at the conclusion of this video to determine that. Now for this year, Mel Kuyper has defensive end Aiden Hutchinson as his number one overall pick with his first quarterback not slotted until spot number 16, being Kenny Pickett. Kuyper said on January 24th about Pickett that his comparison for him has been a combination of Derek Carr and Andy Dalton. And NFL teams can win with that kind kind of guy. As I mentioned in my mock draft, hand size is an issue, and some teams could be scared away from that because he's expected to have below 9-inch hands, which has been one of the benchmarks for quarterbacks. As for the future, Mel Kuyper still isn't afraid to take it on, even looking over a year away as he already predicted the first overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. Alabama reporter Mike Rodak tweeted before this year's Heisman Trophy ceremony that Mel Kuyper referred to Bryce Young this morning on ESPNU Radio as the guaranteed number one overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. Young, who was a sophomore in 2021, did win the Heisman but lost in the national championship and now has a lot to live up to in the 2022 college football season, in addition to making sure Sultan Sabin gets back to the championship and comes out a winner this time. He now has the added pressure of already being coined as the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. It is a take that I believe is absurd when it is still to be determined what NFL team will have that number one pick and what their needs may be. What if the Jacksonville Jaguars stink it up another year? Well, Mel Kuyper is not the only one analyzing the draft. In fact, the number of experts seem to grow every day. When it comes to his fellow ESPN cohort of Todd McShay, who has been covering the draft since 2006, they definitely have a love-hate relationship. Although McShay has a better track record, he is often in the shadow of Mel Kuyper. On the latest segment of them discussing the upcoming draft, McShay seems to be getting a little tired of Mel Kuyper. In a February segment of the First Draft podcast, the duo was discussing the best position groups of the draft class, and things got a little heated. When talking about running backs, McShay stated that there wasn't a true first-round talent in this year's class. Then when McShay brought up Derrick Henry and that he was a first-round talent, there are some good backs. But there's not a single back in this class where I say, yeah, he's the next Derrick Henry. There's no one coming in, in my opinion, from what I've seen in this class, where you say, all right, we're set at running back for the next five years. We locked him up with a five-year contract as a first rounder, and we're good to go in that area. Kuiper replied that Henry was drafted in the second round, saying, I thought you mentioned Derrick Henry. That's good revisionist history. It was a second round pick. Mm -hmm. So you know, now everybody, oh, you know, Derrick Henry's great, but Derrick Henry didn't even go in the first round. Derrick Henry went in the second round. And a lot you of got my point, Kuiper. You're always splitting hairs, man. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not splitting. I'm giving you facts. If you'd been talking about him then, you weren't raving about Derrick Henry as the next great running back coming into the NFL that should have been a top 10 to 15 pick, but somehow got into the second round. Plus, people have bought into that philosophy that I had, okay, that you should not take a running back in round one because you're getting the best out of them early on after year three what's happening and you saw the big money of some of them got that didn't really pan out and didn't work uh, you know, to their benefit and you can get these running backs. You can get them from the second round on every year, Todd. It works that way. So, uh, But because of the philosophy teams have taken from me, Todd, uh, and have, have kind of used that. I can't, I, honestly, I, I, No one knows who will supplant Mel Kuyper Jr. as the face of ESPN's draft coverage. In 2014, he said he wouldn't be sitting there in front of a camera on draft day at 75 years old. 
And since he is now 61 years old, that still leaves a lot of questions. Perhaps it's finally time for everyone to ignore his opinion or to just simply accept the fact that he is there to provide entertainment value and not necessarily guidance to NFL general managers. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.